In this chapter, you'll see how others are using their WebML skills in the real world, along with further resources you can use to continue your machine learning journey beyond this introductory course. But first, a huge congratulations on getting to this point. You've taken some very important first steps that will enable you to be even more productive than ever before in this industry, and of course, offer your customers or the company you work for features and services that are previously unobtainable with regular web engineering. But first, let's see what other TensorFlow.js users have been making with the very skills you've learned on this course. See if you can guess which models they're using along with their regular web engineering skills. So first up, we've been seeing a huge increase in users trying to understand the human body. This library available on GitHub combines around eight TensorFlow.js models to gain extra insights into what might be going on in a given moment and exposes high level understandings to the end user as shown. Now, running eight models is quite demanding. So if you try this demo, you should probably use a reasonably powerful desktop or laptop, but this is a glimpse of where the industry is heading to do some really incredible things in this space in the future as things continue to get faster. On a similar note, we've also seen a rise in users using our models for health and fitness. Here you can see how a member of the community has created a yoga instructor that correctly understands when you've held a certain pose for a certain number of seconds before moving on to the next one. You can imagine how you could make something similar using the MoveNet model that you learned about on this course, which is actually more accurate than the PoseNet model that's used in this demo. And if you can understand Pose well enough, then you can use that as a novel form of human computer interaction for your favorite games and more, as shown in this example. Here, a member of our community used one of our pre made models to create an interactive game where you have to smash the blocks in time with the music with your hands. Which brings us on to controlling other things with our bodies. If you move beyond gaming and into the world of creativity and the arts, we're seeing people bring their drawings to life using their bodies with our pose and face models as shown here. In this example, you can draw any character you wish and then have a novel form of motion capture powered by TensorFlow.js using a regular webcam to drive the skeleton of that character in real time for 2D animation. And of course, you can go one step further of 3D if you know technologies like 3.js. The VTuber community have embraced TensorFlow.js to drive virtual avatars that they can then use to join live streams or digital meetings in a real-time manner. Really impressive work. Which brings us on to combining TensorFlow.js with emerging web technologies such as WebXR, shown here. WebXR allows you to perform mixed reality right from the browser on a smartphone. In this example, the creator wanted to visualize pose over time in this very futuristic demo to see how the martial arts person changes his form over time in a novel way. And on the subject of martial arts and sports, we're also seeing a rise in startups across this industry use TensorFlow.js for sports related training as shown on this slide. In this demo by Team Sports, a company over in the UK, they're able to define custom routines for any sport or activity to create interactive and gamified workouts, making sports practice a lot more social, while also getting real-time feedback and tips for improvement based on your posture and more. Now, next up, let's not forget that JavaScript works well with custom hardware too. We recently saw the first ever Kickstarter that was powered by TensorFlow.js to create custom hardware like this automated video assistant that allows you to capture yourself in action when playing sports. Remember, JavaScript can run pretty much anywhere, and when paired with, say, Web Bluetooth APIs, WebRTC, or WebSockets, you can easily talk to a custom hardware device like this one to then send commands to do a physical action based on the content from other sensors, like the video stream, as shown on this slide. And on the subject of custom hardware, we've seen a number of creative agencies around the world embrace TensorFlow.js to create digital kiosks like this touchless photo booth to drive real-world experiences with customers at shopping malls and beyond. In fact, one more example is this digital kiosk to order food without touching a screen using hand gestures. You can get pretty creative with these interfaces to create a pretty slick user experience if you put your mind to it. As this is a new area of research right now in the land of JavaScript, there is much untapped potential here that I encourage you to explore. And if you can recognize gesture, maybe you can optimize other experiences in your life too, like this in-car gesture recognition system that runs on React Native powered by TensorFlow.js to control your music and phone calls without needing to look at the screen directly. And on the subject of cars, hooking TensorFlow.js up to your Raspberry Pi allows you to perform home automation too. In this case, Node-RED by IBM is used to deploy a TensorFlow.js model to a Raspberry Pi that can recognize the car and the number plate to open the garage door automatically, as you can see on this slide. 
Now, moving on to other areas, presenters are using TensorFlow.js to understand their audiences better in a privacy preserving way. Here you can see as people react to the content, their anonymous emotions are displayed on the pie chart in real time, allowing the presenter to see how engaged the audience might be in today's digital meetings, which was something he was missing from the times when he gave in-person talks, creating a more connected experience with the people watching remotely. And on the subject of solving problems you have, this member of the community created a TensorFlow.js solution to solve Sudoku puzzles in augmented reality using his experience of computer vision and machine learning combined. Check the YouTube video on the slide for a really great explanation of how he actually achieved this. Continuing the theme of solving problems, many startups are creating custom models too for data that matters to them. Here, a satellite imaging company uses TensorFlow.js to recognize objects in such imagery, allowing them to identify and even count those objects over large geographic regions. Or maybe you want to recreate a specific effect. Here, a community member uses face tracking to create a motion-based parallax effect to give you the illusion of having a 3D screen when used with 3D models displayed with 3.js in the browser. Or you could even use the face mesh model to create a face mask from any image and then see it augmented in real time live in the browser. Maybe you're working in the movie industry or some cultural event like Halloween and you want to create a fun interactive experience for people to try. And finally, how about turning your voice into a musical instrument using Magenta's tone transfer model that runs entirely in the browser through TensorFlow.js? You can simply sing any song or tune that you wish and hear it being played by an instrument of your choice, allowing anyone the ability to now play an instrument with their voice and this generative model. Now, as you've seen, there's a ton of great examples already made by the community with new ones coming out every single week. Almost every demo shown here uses one or a combination of the pre-made models that you've learned about on this course or new ones that have recently come out. Furthermore, there might be other industries out there beyond the example shown here, just waiting to be explored. Now, most of the examples here were very visual for this slide deck, but remember, there's also plenty of opportunities for tabular data, natural language processing, and more as you saw on this course. And if you want to see even more great demos, check the hashtag made with TFGS over on social media, such as Twitter or LinkedIn, as there's just too many to fit into this video. Certainly want to bookmark for inspiration. And if you make something using TensorFlow.js, make sure you use the tag so we can find your work for a chance to be featured at future events. And on that note, it's now up to you as one of the first machine learning web engineers to show your customers or existing team at work what's possible in a browser to drive the next generation of web apps for everyone to use. Exciting times ahead, and I look forward to seeing what you create. Now, in the next section, I'll show you how to connect with the amazing existing TensorFlow.js community, share some new model types worth exploring, and further resources you might want to consider to continue your journey. See you there.